Well, hello. So glad that you're joining us here at Vineyard Church with our online services. Today, we're going to celebrate motherhood. Moms are amazing, and we love them here in our uh, vineyard community. You know, when I was younger and I had young kids, uh, parents would come who had older kids, and they would come up to me, and they say, hey, make sure and enjoy this time in your life because they grow up so quickly. And that's true, but you know, I would say that for those of us who still have moms that are alive, enjoy your moms because they too grow up quickly. And so we do want to honor them. You know, one of the ways I'd like to do that is is, uh, this weekend, since we are on this online experience, I would like to just do a shout out to moms. uh, And specifically, if you have kids, if you'd let us know how many kids you have in the chat box, in the little chat dialogue box, whether you're on uh, YouTube Premiere or Facebook or on our uh, church live site, let us know because we want to give the mom who has the most kids. In fact, most kids meaning kids, grandkids, great grandkids, add them all up. Whoever has the most for each service, we want to send you a gift card uh, to a local restaurant. Now, of course, you can't eat in the restaurant at this point. Uh, If you hold on long enough, you will be able to, but you can do takeout. But it's a local restaurant. We want to support them, but we also want to just say thank you. So let us know how many kids you have, grandkids, great grandkids, and you got to live in the Virginia Beach area, of course, so that you can enjoy uh, that gift that we're going to give you. Well, the Bible says that we are to honor our parents, honor our mother and father. Here's exactly what it says. Uh, Exodus 20 verse 12 says, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land. You know, it's a funny thing. That little word in the English language has a lot of meaning. I mean, for some of us, we just resonates in our heart. Like just, we think about our mom, we think of all the great memories and things and that they've done for us and, and, and just wonderful. Others of us is more of ambiguity about it. Uh, maybe our moms have, uh, you know, the, the relationship there is, is struggling or maybe the, you're, it's, there's some sadness with it because your mom has passed away and you, and you miss her. You have wonderful thoughts, but there's some sadness with it. Well, there's all across the board, uh, all kinds of feelings. Interesting, when we look at this, commandment where the Bible says, honor your mom. There's no limits on it. It's not like only when you're a kid, uh, you know, living at home. I mean, if you're 80 years old and your mom is a hundred, it still applies. We're to honor our, our moms. And so we want to certainly honor that uh, today. And I want to give you three ways that you can honor your parents, honor your mom specifically. Number one is by accepting and appreciating them. They certainly need acceptance because the older you get, the more uh, we start to see uh, behind the curtain. We start to see some of the things that uh, we thought our mom had it all together when we were younger. And as we get older, we start realizing, oh, they have some weaknesses. They have frailties. They have things that they don't always get right. And, and so that can cause us to struggle sometimes is how am I supposed to um, accept them and honor them in that? But the truth is, None of us are perfect. And so the Bible says that all of us have sinned. We've all fallen short. We all make mistakes there in Romans 3.23. And the only perfect parent is God. Other than that, your, your parents weren't perfect and you're, weren't, you weren't a perfect kid. And so just recognizing that, hey, everybody makes mistakes. I was looking at this uh, these th- on Amazon, a couple books. One's called I'm, in, I'm Dysfunctional, You're Dysfunctional. Another one's Why Smart People Make Dumb Mistakes. And then my favorite is, is I'm not okay, you're not okay, but it's okay. That kind of sums it up. You know, we all kind of in this together. We all make mistakes. And when the Bible's talking about honoring parenthood, it's talking about the position of parenthood. You see, there's three sources of authority, which is the family and the church and the government, that's what brings order to a society. And when you're in a court of law and you speak to a judge, for example, and you refer to him or her as your honor, you're not talking about their character. They might be a jerk. You know, you don't really know necessarily, but you're talking about their position. And in the same way, when the Bible says we're to honor our mom, honor our parents, we're, to, we're honoring that position. And, and one of the ways we do that is just by accepting it. You say, well, why should I have to accept my parents, I didn't choose them. Well, that's true. Obviously, you didn't choose them. But you know, they didn't choose you either. And so you're kind of put together in this way. And uh, that's why we need massive doses of uh, acceptance for one another. So what does acceptance mean? 
Well, what it's not, what it doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you pretend everything's uh, perfect, everything's great, if it's particularly if it's not, but also it means that you don't uh, necessarily agree with everything that they that they said or that they've asked from you. Uh, those are, that's not what it means. Here's what it is: acceptance is realizing that God has used them in a particular way in your life. In other words, they, they brought you into this world. That's part of what it means. Recognizing that no matter uh, whether they were great or they were terrible, one thing they were used that nobody else was used in this world to do was to bring you into this world. Proverbs 23, 22 in the Passion Translation says, give respect to your father and mother for without them, you wouldn't even be here. So, so certainly that's true. And, and that's one of the reasons we, we give them acceptance. Another one is just list, we accept them by listening to what they say. And, uh, and so sometimes that's, that's a challenge. If you've grown up and you've moved out and they still want to speak a lot and you're, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to diss them and not listen to them, but listening is an important way that we are able to uh, show acceptance. Proverbs 23, 22 in the NIV says, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother. In other words, you can disagree without being disagreeable. You can, you can listen to them and, and not just shine them on and try and, 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 and weigh that and, and, and certainly hear them out. Uh, and then, of course, acceptance means forgiveness. We need massive doses of forgiveness because it's only a matter of time when you're around people uh, and you live with them, especially in the context of a family, that you're going to hurt one another. Sometimes it's in, intentionally, sometimes it's unintentionally but we need to forgive one another. Proverbs 20, verse 20 says, if you curse your parents, curse referring to, in other words, you can't forgive them. You're living with that stuff. It's, it's, that curse is going on. Your life will end like a lamp that goes out in the dark. In other words, nothing good will come from that. You know, do you think in the Bible when it said they were to honor our parents, do you think that parents were dysfunctional? There were some dysfunctional parents in those days. Well, certainly, right? Do you think there were some over-controlling parents? Well, of course. But regardless of that, we're still to honor our parents because, again, it's the position that we're honoring. I think of that story in Genesis, Genesis chapter 9, when Noah had with his sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, they well, the, uh, him, his sons, their wives, his wife, they all built the ark and they were on the flood. When the flood came, they were on that boat for 150 days. When it finally subsided and all the animals got off the ark and he, I guess he celebrated or maybe all the stress, regardless, he, he gets drunk and he ends up passing out naked. And one of his kids sees him and goes, tells his other brothers and then they cover him uh, in, his, in, in, in this mistake that he had made. Now, in today's society, we would probably use that as, you know, uh, as a joke at a party about how stupid our parents are. But here, he uses that story to show how we're to honor our parents and, uh, and, and, and to affirm them, even though they make mistakes. And in fact, the Bible says they were blessed because of that. Deuteronomy 26, 11 says, be grateful for the good things that the Lord has given you and your family. So that, let me give you two things that that you can appreciate about your parents. Number one is you can appreciate your parents' effort because parenting is difficult. It's very demanding. It's, there's takes a lot of effort. When my kids were little, uh, just corralling them took a lot of effort, much less trying to teach them something. As they got older and they were into their teens and they were, you know, stretching their, their independence and, 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 and kind of, you know, kicking up some dust and all the things that go with that, that was a challenge. And so it is very, very a difficult uh, and demanding job to be a parent. And uh, if you're a parent, you, you know that's true. Botanists say that a tree, you can tell how hard uh, a season was on a tree by based on its rings. Well, I would say that's true with parents and gray hair. And you can tell, like if you go back through family photos, you just go, oh, look at all how much, uh, you know, mom or dad grew in their gray hair. And that was the year that they, you know, wrecked the family car, you know, or something. And you can just, the, the, the difficulties that go with that certainly is part of the reason we would appreciate them. Another one is because of their sacrifice. Parenting is expensive. It's not cheap. There's a lot to go into it. One study said it costs about a quarter of a million dollars to raise a kid. That's from infancy all the way up through schooling, clothes, 
uh, doctor's bills, all the things that go into raising a kid. Uh, it's just expensive. Think of all of the things uh, your parent could have done if they hadn't had you, the kind of life that they could have lived. And so they, they not only, it was difficult, but they sacrificed on your behalf. Proverbs 23, 22 says, when your mother is old, show her your appreciation. I love that. Great verse for Mother's Day. Show her appreciation. We certainly want to do that. Well, number two, another way that we can honor our moms is by affirming and not abandoning them. Unfortunately, as parents grow older today in our society, in the American society, often they lack the affirmation. They're, as the older they get, the more of their friends who were affirming in their life die. Uh, their uh, workplace that they used to got a, get a lot of affirmation. Uh, in the marketplace, they no longer are wanted or needed. Nobody seeks for their advice or their skills. And then also their kids uh, get married, have their own lives, are raising their own family, and often can't check in with them. And it's even more difficult during the corona time. Here it is, uh, parents are often, uh, whether that's an independent living or in a nursing home, all kinds of contexts, and they can't really uh, see their kids for different reasons. It's just very, very difficult. And we wanna certainly appreciate uh, parents. So how can we affirm parents? Well, one of the ways is to stay in touch. And of course, it is difficult in this day, right? It is difficult, which is one of the reasons why we leverage technology more, whether it's on the phone or email, texting. Of course, Zoom is something that is, is, is uh, becoming more and more popular. Uh, FaceTime, all kinds of ways, but we want to stay in contact him, it, with them if we can, and then share the details of your life. A lot of times we don't take the time, because that does take time, to sit down with, with your mom and, and share some of the details of your life. It means so much to them, and it's certainly a way that we can affirm them. I want to read this first. Very, I love this verse out of 1 Timothy. It says this. It says, anyone who won't care for his own relatives when they need help, especially his own family, has no right to say he is a Christian. Such a person is worse than a heathen. Pretty strong language. But he's saying, hey, when you see somebody in need, and it's not always financial. It can be a need that's emotional or relational. There's all kinds of ways. It's, it's part of the way that we can, can affirm them. And, and not to sabotage it by saying, well, you know, uh, I didn't get that when I needed it. But just say, hey, I want to, that's the way I can honor my mom. What does that mean? What well, might mean changing her oil or inviting them into your house? Of course, after the coronavirus, I guess, right? Uh, may, it might look all kinds of ways where you help them figure out some technology. Or if they get older, you're helping them with um, uh, figure out some, some ways to get uh, care in their home or helping them in the nursing home or all kinds of different ways. For me, it's been a challenge because I've lived uh, several states of way. My mom lives in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, and I live here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And it's been a difficult time to try to always figure that out. I try to fly there a few times a year. I reach out as much as I can. Paul says this uh, there in 1 Timothy 5, where he says, they should put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. And so it's part of the way that we can honor our parents. He says it pleases God when we do this. You know, Jesus did this on the cross. Here he is. He's been scourged. He was, he was being crucified. Very difficult to even breathe. He only says seven things. And one of them is when he's caring for his mom. He wants to honor his mom as she goes in and becomes uh, older. He wants to make sure she's cared for. He says this in John 19, 26. Mother, look, John will be the son to you. Then he said, John, look, she will be a mother to you. From that day on, John accepted Mary into his home as one of his own family. And so here Jesus on the cross, he's dying and he's thinking about his mom. He's thinking, how can I affirm her? How can I honor her? And John does this. John takes her under his wing uh, all throughout the rest of his life. A tradition tells us that when John was on the island of Patmos, Mary was with him. He was caring for her. And then ultimately they end up in Ephesus and uh, Mary's with them as well. And so what a beautiful illustration of caring for uh, your mother, caring for your parents. And then lastly, uh, number three is by assimilating and not avoiding their life teaching. There is life teaching that comes uh, from our parents. God has, will use our parents if we're open to that. 
and we're, we're, we're open to their advice. Recently, uh, this week, I decided I wanted to do some more life teaching for my mom, and I wanted to share that with you. Some of you have never met my mom. She used to come here quite a bit when she was younger, but uh, she hasn't been able to travel as much. And so I'd like you to, uh, I, I'm just going to ask her a couple questions. That way you can meet her, and, and that's a way to celebrate uh, my mom on this day. Would you listen to a few things that she has to share? Watch this. So thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, I have a few questions for you. One is easy. It's just a softball pitch to you. It's uh, just how many kids do you have? Uh, well, I have, ha I have five children. Five great children. And I have 11 grandchildren who are super great. And I have five great grandchildren who they're all adorable. And I'm 82 years old. Would you share maybe uh, one of the things that's caused you pain uh, in motherhood? Uh, I did have one very painful thing happen, uh, which I do believe affected our whole family probably. And I think, truly think that it brought us closer in the end. But um, my son, one of my older sons, he became ill at 19 years old. And I was working and I got a call from the University of Arizona where he lived and they said, your son, something's wrong. He is throwing all of his clothes, everything he owns in the trash can. And I left my office. I rushed down to the university as fast as I could and he was gone. And I never heard from him or I refused to believe that I would never see him again. And I got to the point where someone told me the police would not help because he was over 18. But I started passing his pictures around down, uh, downtown Tucson, where the homeless were living at that time and hanging out. And I went to the churches down there. I went to uh, any places where I thought they might see him. About, oh, six, seven months later, after he disappeared, I got a call at my office again and said, your son is in the food line. And I never raced so fast. People understood, they were great. I headed downtown, found the food line. I walked down, I couldn't find him. There was nowhere. I thought he's already gone, he's left. I didn't make it in time. And on my way back, I saw this little figure sitting on the ground with a blanket over him. And the Holy Spirit said to me, there's your son. That was one of the most joyful times in my life. Mm. From pain to joy. It's a rare thing to have happen, but all times, all, all mothers have some type of pain. And that's, I'm just sharing mine. He was uh, diagnosed as uh, paranoid schizophrenic. And uh, it took years and years of medication. Um, and uh, he would be in hospitals. It took a long, long time for his rehabilitation. I don't think he really got better until he was nearly 40. That's how I got through. I knew I would find him, that I must never give up not looking for him. And what would you give uh, as a piece of advice to another mom, maybe going through something similar, some kind of difficulty with one of their kids? Never, never give up no matter how little the problem might be or how big it doesn't matter pray give it to the lord and he will deliver never give up well that's my mom i love her very much she's had a profound influence on me and you know we see in the bible that moms had profound influences on people as well let me give you just one example is timothy timothy was a pastor of a very very large church that had huge influence of sharing the gospel he's a partner with with paul for quite a while and he has a lot of pushback it takes a lot of courage to be in the environment that he's in and paul writes to him and reminds him that the strength that he has, the faith that he has, the courage he needs really is rooted in how his mother 
poured into him. Great verse. I love this. It says in 2 Timothy 1.5, I have been reminded of your sincere faith. This is Paul talking to Timothy. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother. So he even points to his grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. And I am now persuaded also lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. That's a key phrase there. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-discipline, the very things he needs to do the job that God's called him to do there in Ephesus, the church that he passes, pastors. But it says on the laying on of hands. You see, what his mother gave him, uh, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, they, it was an impartation, not just information, it's an impartation. That's the laying on of hands. It's not just like they laid hands on them. They did. But it's it's the symbolism as well, that there was something that was passed through their hands. There was It wasn't just in their mind. It wasn't just information. I know when my kids were young that and they were living with me and I had an opportunity to give them a lot more influence, I was always looking for impartational moments, moments where I could impart into them. When Paul talks about the impartation he had from Gamaliel, who was a great theologian of his time, he said they learned the zeal of the Lord at the feet of Gamaliel. How do you learn zeal? Not from a sermon on zeal. It's at his feet. In other words, he wants to rub up next to him, be in close proximity. When you see God has given mothers an amazing opportunity to do impartation more than any person on earth because they have such close proximity with that little person that they're pouring their lives into. And so it's impartation. So be praying for them. God, use my life to impart, not just wisdom, not just knowledge, but, but I want character development. And wisdom is certainly part of that. Notice this verse, it says, she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue, tongue is the law of kindness. What is the law of kindness? He's talking about character development. He's talking about something that's sewed into a person's heart. Uh, Proverbs 2 says, My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. We already looked at that verse earlier. And then it says in verse 21, Bind them upon your heart forever. Bind them. This is what we're to do. This is impartation. Bind them unto your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you're awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light. And the corrections of discipline are the way to life. You know, there's so many people today that don't have that wisdom. They don't have that impartation. They haven't bound them around their heart. And they try to make it through life without that. And yet, it's part of the way God placed parents, particularly moms, because we're talking about that today, to speak and to impart uh, those, those things of of character development, of knowing how to, to get through life, to having wisdom to see life differently. And certainly that's something that we pray for and want. Proverbs 3.23 says, Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Moms, we honor you. You're making a difference. You've made a difference. You've impacted so many people. And, and I'm so thankful for all that you've done and do in our church, in our community, and really impacting the world. And we thank you for that. Let's pray. Father, I just lift up moms today. Really, I just lift up women who have a heart to be a mom. And, uh, and they impart that in different ways uh, to people all around them, that mother spirit. Uh, some of you, uh, you you've want to be a mom. And this is a place of tenderness and maybe some disappointment. And so I just pray, Father, that your favor goes out to those who are longing to be moms and, and that, 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 that that would be realized, whether it's their own biological children or some other thing, maybe through adoption or some other way. Lord, I pray for the wounds of motherhood. Motherhood can carry some wounds when there's rejection and disappointment and, and sadness. Things didn't turn out like we had hoped and prayed for. And, and so, Lord, I pray for those moms who carry wounds with them, Lord, that your grace would, would flow into their lives, that they would experience healing where that is needed, Lord, that there would be forgiveness, that there would be reconciliation. Lord, I pray for that. I pray, Lord, for your power. Lord, I thank you for moms and all that they do and how they've poured into so many of us. Some of you may have had a very bad experience. Maybe you've been abandoned by a parent, maybe even your own mom. And 
And you know, the Bible says that for those who are abandoned by their parents, they have a special place that God draws near to them. And, uh, and I believe that's God's promise for you, that he wants to draw near to you and comfort you, empower you. He'll take even bad things that happen and turn them and use them for good if we just, we'll just lay those down and say, God, use that. You know, the, I know it's Mother's Day, but we want to just uh, for this, take this moment and just all of those who are listening online, if you've never put your faith in Christ, you know, Jesus loves you more than any parent could ever love you. And he demonstrated that by dying on the cross. And so if you would just take a moment on this day, it certainly would be a great way to honor the best parent of all, which is God. Just say, God, thank you for being uh, a perfect parent. Uh, I don't understand it all. But would you say, God, I want to put my faith in you today. Help me to follow you. Would you say, God, bring healing into my life and forgiveness where it's needed and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us as we are able to just celebrate uh, our moms and certainly celebrate uh, your walk in faith wherever you're at. If you prayed with me, let me know about that. Uh, there's a place for you to do that on the uh, online church uh, vineyard live site. Uh, also, we'd love to hear to pray for you and uh, and let us know what you're going through. We'll pray for you as well. Moms, thank you so much. And may the Lord bless you and enrich you in all ways. Take care. Thank you for joining us on our Vineyard Church stream. If you prayed that prayer with Pastor Andy, we want to hear about it. We want to support you. We believe that it's the best decision that you can make. If you're on the Church Online platform, click that button that says, I committed my life. And that will take you to a Connect Card option where we will be able to send you information and support this new decision. If you're on Facebook, let us know in the chat or send us a private message. We would like to send you the same information. Hey, if you call Vineyard Church your home, you can actually give online right at our website, vineyardchurch.com, or you can text. You can text 45777 VCC plus the amount and give right there on your phone. We have been doing so much in our community. Just because the building is closed doesn't mean that we're not reaching out with our food pantry, financial resources, and giving people food gift cards so they can eat during this season. If you'd like to support that, just click the COVID-19 option. And hey, we also want to pray for you. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, send those in. We know it's a crazy time. We want to support you spiritually. You can send those right there on our website, vineyardchurch.com. Just click prayer. If you're on the church online platform, you can actually get live prayer right now by clicking the prayer button. You'll immediately be connected with one of our prayer team members who would love to pray for you right now. Stay connected with us on social media. You can follow us at Vineyard VA on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. But hey, we're doing this next week. We'll see you right here on this platform next week. Invite somebody out. We'll see you then.